How you doing, Impact fans? How you doing, wrestling fans? This is Charles of Impact Fan Nation, the very newest member of the Impact Lounge crew. I am here to deliver you Impact Twitch reviews and Impact One Night Only reviews, um, being that BQ has a lot going on, just as well as Adam and Roe. And I want to thank those guys for, you know, trusting me to be a part of this and to continue to help continue to make this the number one Impact channel on youtube well today guys i will be giving you a review of penta does iowa the uh one night only i mean excuse me the twitch review in conjunction with uh wrestling revolver um before i get into it there's something that you all need to know for all of you you know that are independent wrestling fans that you know this was an independent show and there are certain things that you should expect such as the rosh's crowd fast-paced action spotting this you know and not this typical tv style of wrestling that we get to see on impact or for everyone else that watches you know the other product wwe on that as well because you know whether you want to admit it or not there are differences in style so we're going to jump right on into it you know um this was presented by wrestling revolver and impact wrestling in iowa you know pentagon is the he is the headliner against jimmy jacobs for the night but the match, excuse me, the card starts off with Shane Strickland versus Jason Cade. For all of you that aren't familiar with Jason Cade, you know, Shane Strickland, they're both uh, two African-American guys. They're both high flyers, uh, fast-paced action. Shane Strickland is also known as Kill Shot in Lucha Underground. He is uh, very well known in the independent scene. I mean, it's a treat to just to see him wrestle. If you haven't rest seen him wrestle, you need to do so. Um, oh, also, Jason Cade had Famous B by his side. Famous B is another Lucha Underground act. Um, that he's like a manager that um, pretty much just hires people to do his bidding and wrestle and things like that. Uh, he's a pretty good character, um, but let's jump into it. This match was good, I must say. It was one of your typical indie matches, very fast-paced, lots of spots. Um, not a whole lot of high-flying spots, but lots of uh, high-intense moves um that were delivered i fully expected to see shane strickland win this match because he is the more known of the two but um this was a great match showcasing what jason k can do as well it seems like that was more so what this was about being that there's so many people that know what shane strickland can do already there were a couple of moves that um that were a little iffy to me you know because in the tv style wrestling certain moves will have uh, your star is down for a while or even out for a count and what the case may be as opposed to things are very fluid in these independent matchups with these independent stars such as there was a time where um, I believe that uh, Strickland was power bombed or, or, or um, power drived or something like that in a normal TV match that would be well, that would end up in someone being laid out or you know, out for the count for a while. Well, after it was delivered, they, uh, Shane Strick can jump up, delivered a drop kick and, and like feign it. Uh, we've seen this type of thing before where a person can get out one last action and then the fallout, you know, and this was the type of thing that happened. But it's normally from something like a punch, a slap or something that's not as effective as they say something that can be used as a finishing move. But uh, all in all, it was a very, very um, Shane Strick can dominate most of the match. He did until the end. There was a few interferences by Famous B that caused the momentum to shift. It caused it to change. And Jason K took well, uh, really good advantage of it. I must say they're both really good wrestlers. They're both pretty technical. Um, they both definitely know how to high fly in and out the ring. But all the u ring was utilized very well. And all, all in all, it was a good match. It was really like an indie wrestling fan's um, dream of sorts. Only they didn't have like the dream stars in it. Being Jason K was one of the um contestants throughout the match uh some i won't say throughout the whole thing but um josh matthews spoke on how he would like to see shane strickland in an impact ring i can definitely see that happening being that he's as well known as he is he's been on um twitch before as kill shot tagging with the mac against lax for the tag team titles at um lucha on the ground versus impact wrestling which was a very good match it ended up with jason k taking the win um, I was very surprised, but it was pretty good to do so because you don't want the same people to continue to win and win and win and overshadow people that need, you know, to to get more of a push to, for the names to get more out there. And I was very satisfied with the way that this match ended. 
Up next, we had a triple threat tag team match of uh, three indie teams. None of them were in teams that we've seen on TV at all. The first team was called The Dirty. The Dirty looks like, or uh, the best I could explain would be the Harris brothers of the TNA days. They were both two ball-headed guys, kind of tall, uh, rugged-like, um, kind of like bikers, really, like the Harris brothers. They kind of give you that idea. They had zero gravity. Um, if you remember right before WCW went defunct, you had AJ Styles and someone else. I can't remember exactly who were who it was with that were in a match. I mean, uh, excuse me, in a tag team together. Um, and this team reminds me of them so much. I mean, just listen to the names, Zero Gravity. They're a high-flying team. They're a fast team. They're agile. You know, it, it's, it's, it's a real joy to watch. And then you had the third team, the Knight Riders. They kind of look like War Machine, only smaller guys. They had, like, black, um, I won't say uh, loincloths, anything like that, but they had a tire close to that. And one guy had long, brownish, auburn hair. The other was bald-headed. Uh, but all in all, this triple threat match was uh, non-stop. Um, I would say the standouts of the match were the 30. They have a really good team when it comes to continuity. Excuse me. Um, and just like all of them, all of them seemed like they were well polished, like they had been wrestling together for a while. Like um, they had something to prove and they showed that. It seems like everyone tonight, excuse me, that night, had a chip on their shoulder and they really wanted to show what they got and try to get on the impact wrestling t uh, television on pop tv and it showed this um was a match where a lot of the time one team was on the outside while another team showed what they got and gave action um zero gravity would be like the most flashy i guess the most pleasing to the eye if it were to come to impact wrestling because of them being all over the ring and they would be like real great in the X division. Uh, the Dirty and Night Riders, uh, especially the Dirt, I think would be a really good fit in the tag team division, being that um, the way that the tag team division is, is that it's just lots of athletes. It's lots of um, moves. People can't just lumber around like teams have done in the past, you know, in wrestling, not just impact wrestling. And um, this right here, I wish everyone could see this match for that has not seen it because it is something that that you can for everyone because they were able to pull out all kinds of stops moves that from jumping to the outside inside moves all over the ring they they put on a really good show and uh the dirty came out with the win um well deserving i wouldn't say that i expected any one or the other to win because i never heard of any of them and i've never seen wrestling revolver up until this point but it was definitely also a good match um high intensity never a dull moment and it was um pleasing to the eyes without a doubt your next match was a match that i'm sure any wrestling fan will look forward to it you know will kind of be biting their thumbs just to see we had the jessica havoc former impact knockouts champion indie darling champion all over the place versus taya lucha royalty valkyrie now you tell me what you think this match was this match was incredible this was one of the better matches of the night. Not, let the, not that there were any bad ones because there were no bad matches, but this would definitely have to be one of the better. So it's just showing that the knockouts and impact and just women as a whole in, in wrestling are just really giving it all they got, really showing that they have a place in the wrestling business. And um, this was definitely no exception. Um, for all of you that think that this may have been a mop-up of Taya, by Jessica, you're completely wrong. We all know that Taya has a move set that is great. We all know that Jessica Havoc is a big, powerful woman, and she knows how to handle her own. But this was more so of a showcase of Taya. Taya really got off. I mean, she dominated a whole lot of this match. It was a lot of back and forth just as well. But Taya really showed like almost all of her move repertoire. She looked good in the ring. Everything was fluid, no botches. Um, Jessica Havoc was her usual self, very, um, prestigious, uh, looked like she's gained a little weight, but she's always been like a big, hefty, you know, thick woman, uh, but she still moves around great. Taya, though, was definitely the shining star of this match, or, uh, she ended up winning, she got the pinfall, very impressive victory, 
Very, very impressive victory to be able to beat the former knockout champion, the, the indie darling, the star of indies that I'm sure her winning record is ridiculous as it is. And um, it's just showing more and more that Taya is, is in the right place. She where she needs to be and to continue to improve as if she really needed to improve that much more. And that she is definitely in contention for the knockouts title. This was a treat. Um, and congratulations to Taya. They both put on a good match. So I would say congrats to the both of them. The next, we had the Open Scramble Championship Invitational. This right here was an eight-man match in the ring all at the same time. And I'm going to give you a list of the competitors. We had Matthew Palmer, Gringo Loco, Airwolf, Sugar Dunkington, so excuse me, Sugar Dunkerton, which is personally one of my favorites, Larry D, Ace Austin, Chip Day, Andy Dalton, and none other than Rich Swan. Yes, he made an appearance. For Penta does Iowa, and it was a treat. I mean, the fans, he was a, easily the most recognizable uh, competitor in this match. Had the fans going when he come out with Talano's Richie's music. It was great. It was nice. Now, this match, pretty much as soon as it started, um, it went black. Did something happen with the broadcast. So, I'd probably say the first 10 minutes of the match, maybe longer, I uh, could be wrong, was missed. Um, just as well as the sound was bad throughout the day, it was hard to hear the crowd or the ring announcers. You could hear Josh and Sanjay pretty decent. Uh, sometimes you couldn't even hear them well, but throughout the, you know, the audio was bad throughout the, um, throughout the event. But when it came back into the match was underway, you had Sugar Dunkerton handling his business, you know, doing this, his, his, uh, his, his, his character things. He's telling people, give me my money. You know, it was funny, you know, make the, the crowd laugh. This match was very 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 fast pace it was never stopping um it's what you expect out of an eight man full of guys that could probably be in the x division it should be in the x division um i would say the standout of this match was the guy named ace austin if you can think of anyone that he would wrestle like i would ache him to andrew everett they look quite alike with long hair long uh, brownish um, hair they both are really good high flyers uh austin does moves um such as moonsaults Standing mood salts and um, standing her coronas and things of sort. This is one of those fast paced matches to where if you blink or if you step out the room for any amount of time, you're definitely going to miss something good and you'll have to rewind it. Um, it ended up being Rich Wine as the winner. I think everybody should expect that being Rich is coming back into the scene now, you know, to be, you know, actually seen on television or Twitch and things of the sort. I like the way the impact is doing this. Being that they can't show him on on Pop TV because it's 90 day complete cost with WWE, but they can put him on the internet for an indie show. Really smart, and um, it's a good showing by Rich and everyone else. After the match, the local hero Larry D was um, giving a hand clap of praise. You know, um, they were screaming "Thank you, Larry." I don't know exactly why. Maybe he was leaving. Who knows? Um, I'm totally confused about that, but. Uh, Sammy Callahan came out and was uh, beating on the uh, on the ring on the ring apron, you know, to continue to get the praise for um, for Larry D. It was well deserved because Larry D is a bigger guy and he really showed his stuff. Um, I mean, I'm just guessing that he's just a legend around the area because I know he is also from the, the Iowa area. So you know that was real nice to see. Uh, it's just as well as OVE came out to do the same. Um, your next match. This was pretty cool. It was fun. This was more of a showman's match to just give you some kind of comment release, I guess, some kind of to slow it down. After all the fast paced stuff, we had the man scout, Jake Manning versus Tommy Dreamer. The man scout's gimmick is he's a full grown man that is a boy scout, a.k.a. the man scout. He wears the boy scout um, garb to the ring. Um, I believe he's he's a heel. I believe it, you know, from the crowd reactions. So he gets in the ring. This is supposed to be in a House of Hardcore match, House of Hardcore rules. Jake Manning, the man scout versus Tommy Dreamer. So when Jake Manning comes out first, then Tommy Dreamer, and Jake Manning gets the mic. And he proceeds to speak of how he didn't sign for a House of Hardcore's rules match. And being that he's a scout, he must follow the rules and can't participate in this match because he knows that Tommy Dreamer does not want a regular match. He wants himself a hardcore match. So he's like, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to leave here. And um, because, you know, you don't want a, a regular match and I'm a stickler for the rules. So I'm just going to leave. So, of course, Tommy Dreamer is like, okay, if this is what you want, uh, 
uh, a foot and nail, regular old match, then I'll do that, and boom, boom, boom. And this is what we get. It begins in that way. Slower pace match, much, much slower pace match, more of a TV style match. It started that way as a one-on-one match. It's pretty good. Um, being Tommy Dreamer, of course, he's not as fast as he used to be. He's never been the most technical of wrestlers. He's, he's a hardcore guru. And Jake Manning, he seems like... Um, there's nothing bad I can say about him. Put it like that. I believe that his style is definitely TV ready. Um, his gimmick is pretty funny. Um, I believe, it, it, you know, with gimmicks, you have to be extreme gimmicks. You have to be careful. You know, some things catch, some things don't. Um, I don't know if it'll catch like Stone Rockwell would, would because Stone has like this character that's funny and that can appeal to people. It's one of those things where people are like, oh, my God, this is so corny that I got to keep watching. Or it's, a, it's, you know, it's to the point where it's like, oh, this is so good. I got to keep watching. Well, the Man Scout may not have that same appeal, but I would definitely like to see what his character can bring to TV. As for in the ring, you know, he, he's nothing extraordinary, but at the same time, he's definitely a reliable wrestler. He, he knows what he's doing on the mat and things of the sort. Tommy Dreamer, you got what you get from Tommy. You know what you get. You get you some elbows, you get you some House of Hardcore chants, and you get yourself some extreme weapons and things of the sort because you had to know this was going to turn into a hardcore match. And yes, it did. Um, it was do some funny things, uh, uh, such as Mr. Manning, the man scout. He got to the top of a ladder. He pulled out a, a, a Boy Scouts manual. He read in it. He put his hands across his chest and he did a, a trust fall onto Tommy Dreamer, which was funny. Sanjay jumped up, you know, out of his seats. He does a trust fall, huh? You know, you know, Sanjay, uh, Sanjay is a bit extra in this, um, event, I must say. But we all know how Sanjay does when he gets excited with the crazy, annoying laughs and things like that. This um, ended up with a Tommy Dreamer win. I think everybody should have expected Tommy Dreamer to come out with the W with that one, you know, on, on this show. Um, next. This was uh, 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 the closest thing to a TV match, I'd say, that we get. Clayton Gaines, another indep- independent guy, versus E. La Drake. Clayton Gaines and Eli Drake have a very, very similar build, height and everything. They're both muscle guys. Clayton has dark hair. He flexes his steel throughout matches in the beginning. And he was throughout the match, he was claiming that he was stronger than Eli Drake. So this was a lot of test of strength going on back and forth. Um, Eli Drake didn't get in the mic in the beginning, which was surprising. And we all wonder, why didn't Eli, what's going on? Why didn't he get the mic? Um, this was... Um, Clayton Gaines really showed that he can step into the ring with another power guy. He's a younger fella. He looks like he's got to be under 25. Or, um, his style is a lot like Eli Drake's. It was actually like watching a younger Eli Drake wrestle against uh, present Eli Drake. This was a good technical type of matchup. Uh, Eli Drake ended up winning with the uh, gravy train. That was to be expected as well. I really didn't expect any indie guys to go over against any impact guys, being that this was, you know, impact hosted show. Um, this was one of those matches that was not too slow and it was not too fast for the guys that were in the ring, but the, the, they showed that they can keep the speed just as well as keep a TV style as well, because you got to understand with, with our impact guys to be able to transition and you know, go from TV style to this indie style. It's not really something they want to do because it's more injury, it's more um, injury prone, um, and it's more wear and tear on the body. And you know, when you're on TV, you want to try to keep yourself, you know, in the limelight on television. Um, so not not too much was done, which was a good thing, but it wasn't a boring match at the same time. Um, Clayton Gaines, I'm impressed by him. I would like to see him again in the future. I don't think that he's quite TV ready yet. He's definitely kind of green. But he and Eli definitely make a good matchup. And um, I was satisfied without a doubt. Like I said, there were definitely no bad matches. The next match of the evening may very well be the best wrestling match that we got. OVE, all three of OVE, Dave and Jake Christ. And uh, Sally, Sammy Callahan versus Matt Seidel and the Rascals. The Rascals consisting of Desmond Xavier and Zachary Wentz. These two have been also known as Scarlet and Graves. 
Uh, they were CZW uh, Tag Team Champions. They are now, I believe, CZW Tag Team Champions again. They are a really cohesive tag team unit. They've been wrestling for a while together. Uh, Zachary Wentz is a taller uh, Caucasian fellow with a uh, like, shaved head on one side, long hair on the other. These two and Matt Seidel make up a really good trio. Of course, we all know OVE make up a really good trio. And this was beauty. I mean, okay, we all know Desmond Xavier is like, if not the best, high flying nut job in wrestling. Zachary Wentz is almost as good as him. Matt Seidel, one of the best in the world at, at high flying. This, this match was just stellar. Okay, let me put it this way. If you ever wanted to go to a rave and you have no ecstasy. I say just go ahead and watch this match before you go and I believe you'll have all the energy and all the, 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 the everything running through your body that you need to have a good hype night because I was on my toes this whole match. We had um, power bombs from top ropes that ended, uh, okay, what is it called? The uh, Tree of Woe, isn't it? Where people get up. No, excuse me, not the Tree of Woe, that's when they're upside down. But uh, um, when you're going up the power bomb, someone from the top rope, and then others jump on the side, and then you get one person to come under, and then everybody gets slammed out with suplexes and power bombs. It was something like that happened. Only Jake Chris, I mean, excuse me, Dave Chris was waiting as two people were being power bombed and suplex, and the person in the middle being suplexed ended up getting a jumping, sitting out power bomb by Mr. Chris as they came down. It was beautiful. The crowd was just into it. This match was nuts. Um, it ended with, uh, a Chris, um, Chris Cutter because Jake Wentz tried to jump off the top rope to, uh, do some kind of splash onto Sammy Callahan and he was caught by Dave in the air. Um, there was a triple tombstone at one time by OVE, which was real sweet. It was real sick. Um, they kicked out. Uh, there was this move where Zach Wentz did a standing moonsault. And as he was in the air, Desmond Xavier pushed him and propelled him onto Dave Chris. It was just great. I definitely want to see Desmond Xavier and Zachary Wentz as a tag team in Impact Wrestling. The tag team would do wonders with them. Um, OVE picked up the win. And after the win, they uh, congratulated. Well, Sammy, excuse me, it was Jake Chris. He spoke on, he got the mic. As everybody, they was ready, cranking them up for the main event. He spoke on how Matt Seidel is the greatest, one of the greatest high flyers in the business today. And that he, he, he uh, greatly enjoyed sharing the ring with him. Just as well as he greatly enjoyed sharing the ring with the Rascals. He, he, he put over the Rascals, said they're some of the most incredible young kids in the rest of the day. And they have a great future. They've been together for a while and I totally agree. It was real nice to see, you know, OVE putting over... Uh, others at, at this in the event, of course, it's not something they would ever do on TV because you know you don't want to break kayfabe, break character. But it was real nice to see that you know we come together as a company and as wrestlers and as a wrestling business to congratulate and put up others over. And um, they got the ha crowd hyped for the main event of Jimmy Jacobs versus Pentagon Jr. for the Impact World Championship. Well. This was the first time I got to see the zombie princess wrestle. I know that he wrestles on the indie scene as the zombie princess, but I had never seen him do it. You know, I've always known him to be more so of a creative mind. Um, he came out first. Um, throughout the event, the fans got to choose a stipulation for this match. And the stipulation ended up being a street fight. So there was no holds barred, no disqualifications. So Jimmy Jacobs comes out and is... Looking like the Undead Bride, actually. He has, like, white eyes from contacts, um, like blood, or at least the, the look of blood f uh, coming from his dress. He, yes, he has a wedding dress, a pink wedding dress on at the bottom. Um, and he comes out there looking like a princess with a tiara. Uh, uh, it, it, it's, it's a unique character, that's for sure. Uh, and then here comes Pentagon Jr. This match was good. Um, a little slower than what I expected, you know, being Pentagon Jimmy Jacobs and being a hardcore match. Uh, but it was good, nonetheless. Jimmy Jacobs can wrestle. He can. That's all I can say. He's smooth. He doesn't look like he doesn't know what he's doing. 
you can tell he's been killing it on the indie scene. He's been wrestling for a long time. I was very impressed and I was pleased to see that this wasn't just something that was just going to be a one-sided match with Pentagon Jr. just bopping the floor with uh, Jimmy Jacobs. It was not that at all. Or, um, there were, uh, wooden boards used, quite a few that were taken from under the ring. Those kind of dilapidated boards, I would say. Um, like those thin ones, not the really, really thick 2 by 4 type boards. Uh, those thin boards you kind of make walls with, you know, they kind of give it like a frame. Or, um... It was inside and outside the ring. Uh, lots of uh, objects were put up and actually used or used on the people that put these objects up. Jimmy Jacobs set up with quite a few uh, spots and ended up being turned around on um, throughout the match. Pentagon fainted injury um, from leg in injury, of course, um, you know, for the match or whatever. It was It was nice. It was nice to see that they didn't do any silly spots. There were no crazy high, high, high spots that could possibly injure people. And I'm glad that, you know, with the history of injuries going on in Impact Wrestling, that they didn't subject themselves to such, you know, sometimes it could be buffoonery. I don't want to say it's always buffoonery, but sometimes it's a bit much and extra. And we all know that as wrestling fans. Or, um, the, in, to end the match, Jimmy Jacobs set up six chairs, six steel chairs, and put a really, really large piece of wood, thin wood, on top of it. And he was going to try to do a superplex onto that wood. Well, it ended up being turned around and um, Pentagon Jr. ended up doing the Pentagon driver right through that wood and those those chairs to get them pick up the one, two, three in a good match. Um, it wasn't the best match of the night, but it was good. You know, um, overall, I definitely give this this pay-per-view a B. Maybe a B plus. It wasn't perfect, but it was definitely good. Of course, it, there was. The audio heard it some because a lot of things we didn't get to hear. The crowd was really live, but we couldn't really tell by hearing it. You could tell by seeing it, by the reactions and things of the sort. You couldn't really hear the cero mero chants as well as you could because we all know that every crowd that does that chant goes nuts. It wasn't quite like that because of the audio. Um, the commentary was okay. It wasn't the greatest. Um, that's why it takes some points away, but I'm not mad at all for what it was for an indie show that impact put on. It was what you expected. Good matches. You know, we got top stars. We got to see, uh, we had to get to see some, some indie wrestlers show their stuff that we may possibly see on impact sometime soon. Me, myself, I would like to see sugar Dunkerton, um, uh, the Austin fellow or, um, maybe, uh, the dirty, um, those would be some guys I would say look out for. And overall, I would say it was success. It was a really good Twitch show. And I hope that they can continue to do so, put on these good matches and do just like they did and not have our stars of Impact Wrestling doing these crazy spots and, and doing what these indie guys do in these matches. There's a time for that and that time isn't there on Twitch TV. It's just not. Um... Thank you guys for listening. Before I go, I want you all to uh, check out the Impact Fan Nation on Facebook, Impact Fan Nation on Twitter. Or our handle is at Impact Trojan, I M P A C T T R O J A N. Check out BQ Speaks on Twitter. Check out um, uh, BQ on Facebook. Um, the let me think. Uh, Admiral Rowe, check out the Impact Lounge. For impact reviews, explosion reviews, we'll be continuing to put them up on Impact Fan Nation. It has all the information that you can get on Impact Lounge and just and everything Impact. I mean, it's just interactive as hell. Uh, thank you again, once again, BQ, Adam, Rowe, continue to listen in, fellas. I uh, hope you like this review. Smash the like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit that bell and subscribe. And everything you know that we pop up on this Impact Lounge will come straight to you uh, via notification. Everybody, you have a wonderful day, and uh, look out soon for that Cali Combat One Night Only review from me, Charles himself. Peace.